I'm Joshua Bardwell, and today you're going to learn about the Runcam Swift 2. It's a Runcam Swift, which we all know is a pretty decent FPV camera, but it's got a bonus. It's got a built-in OSD with voltage monitoring and a timer. And that makes it perfect for a copter like the Ishin Wizard that I've been playing with on my channel. The Ishin Wizard comes with no built-in voltage monitoring at all. Not even VBAT monitoring. Come on, Ishin. But it also comes with a pretty bad camera. Pretty, 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 pretty bad. Uh, I mean, it'll get you in the air, but it's, it's not great. And so, as long as you're going to upgrade the camera anyway, and if, if there was one thing on the, I think that's the one thing I would upgrade. If there was one thing on the wizard I would say to upgrade, I think it's the camera that's the weakest link. Uh, as long as you're going to do that anyway. You may as well get an OSD with some voltage monitoring, right? And that makes the Runcam Swift a good choice for anybody who's in that kind of situation. You're going to get a camera anyway, and if you're not a real nerd like me who likes playing around with... Uh, beta flight OSD and PIDs and all that stuff. If all I just want to monitor my voltage for f freaking sake. <laughs> well, this may be the camera for you. I continue to be impressed at the little things that Runcam gets right. And I'll tell you, one of the things that I noticed way back when I very first got a Runcam camera was that they include an Allen wrench, a hex wrench. And the reason they do that is because the screws that they give you are hex head. They're not Phillips head. Uh, and I think that's just a little step I've had to fiddle with trying to get them there. They're hard to get them to seat and et cetera, et cetera. Getting to do it with a hex head is just a nice little step that makes your life a little bit easier. And, and I think it's an example of the small touches that Runcam gets right. Another thing they get right is that they include with the camera a spare housing. Now, the actual intent of the housing is that you can have one with this little, you see it's meant to go on here, you see, and it locks in place, right? And there's some frames that, that are set up to take that even without this metal bracket. You see, you can sort of lock your angle in, and that's nice. But if you've got the kind of frame that doesn't have that, that kind of lock-in angle or doesn't use that bracket, you can swap it out for this and get more of a sort of a low-profile scenario. I think it's just a free spare case. I, I had to buy a spare case once, and I think it's like a 7 or $8 option, right? So there you go, free spare case. Good, great, perfect. Another little touch that Runcam gets right is they include a little extension header for the OSD uh, joystick. And the idea is that you can plug this into the camera, you can leave it plugged in, and it hangs out. It's easier to plug the OSD in, so you don't have to actually get inside the copter to get at this this plug right here, uh, very a small thing, a simple thing, but a very thoughtful thing that Runcam has done here. Now, as you can see on the DVR footage, the Swift 2 gives you voltage and a flight time, except it's not really a flight time, it's an on time. So if you don't take off the minute you power the copter up, the timer is not gonna be really super helpful. The voltage monitoring is taken directly from the input voltage. However, there is, uh, I don't know if it, I guess it must be a diode or something. It reads slightly low from what's actually being put in. There is a workaround for that, but I'll just demonstrate this to you right now. We can see here, my battery voltage monitor is reading 15.02, but you can see it's reading 14.9. There is the option to input a separate VBAT plus and you can hook that directly to VBAT, and that will bypass whatever's dropping the tenth of a volt or so here, and that will bypass that and, uh, and give you view perfectly accurate VBAT monitoring if you're willing to run one extra wire. Now, as long as we're looking here, you may notice that this has an audio line, and the reason for that is that this camera also has a microphone. So if you're running a video transmitter that can pass audio back to your goggles, you don't need to put a separate microphone on your copter to take advantage of the, the, the sound of your motors and so forth. Some pilots really like to fly with a microphone, and if you're one of them, now that's included in this camera instead of having to have it as a separate uh, option. Let's take a look now at the menu options that the Swift 2 gives you. If we look at exposure, the first thing I want you to notice is that automatic gain control is off and digital wide dynamic range is on. Now this is actually the recommended setting for FPV flying, but if you'll find that many other cameras ship with automatic gain control on and digital wide dynamic range off, and that's the recommended setting for a security camera. But Runcam knows that they're selling you an FPV camera, not a security camera. And this is one example of how they've, they've chosen to make the defaults for the camera be optimized for the actual market that's using it. 
you could certainly make that change on other cameras and end up in a similar situation, but it's nice to see Runcam acknowledging their market and making the defaults work for FPV pilots like us. If we go back to the main menu, the next thing I want to show you is that the day and night setting comes set to color. The day and night setting controls whether the camera will go to black and white when there's not enough light, when you're in a low light situation. Black and white gives you somewhat more image sensitivity, but a lot of pilots feel that switching to black and white is actually worse. They don't like it, and they say that you should set the camera to color. Again, the default here is set by Runcam for what an FPV pilot is likely to want. Now that was the camera menu. The OSD has its own menu, which you access by pressing and holding up on the joystick for two seconds, and it looks like this. In here, you can set your call sign, and you can choose what options to have visible, such as the pilot's call sign, the timer, the voltage, etc. I actually have no idea what the baseline does. I couldn't figure it out. I tried turning it on and off and didn't really do, seem to do anything. I tend to turn the timer off because I don't think that an on timer is very useful. A flight timer might be useful, but the camera has no way of knowing when you started flying and stopped flying. So I'm just gonna have the pilot's call sign and the voltage and leave it at that. You can also move these options around the screen. You move the voltage by holding left on the joystick for two seconds, and when you do that, you'll get the option to slide it around, up, down, left, right, with the joystick. You see it's, there you go, just like so. And you move the call sign by holding down on the joystick, and move it where you want it. Let's put it over here. Great. And then if you had the timer turned on, you access the timer by holding right on the joystick for two seconds. And then I noticed that the camera lens was not quite focused exactly how I like it, so I'll let you watch me focus the camera lens while I uh, talk you out. I think that putting a better camera on your ready-to-fly copter might be the single most important upgrade you can make. If you can't see where you're going, you can't fly. And many ready-to-fly copters, even semi-decent ones like the Wizard or really, really spectacularly good ones like the Hollybro Shirk in X1, come with f mediocre to terrible cameras. So 35 or 40 bucks to put a good camera on it is money well spent. And with a camera like the Swift 2, you get essentially free OSD, right? Because the Swift 2 is not that much more expensive than many other cameras in its quality range, and it's got an OSD in it. Adding a full OSD, like the Betaflight OSD, certainly gives you a whole lot more features, but it's also much harder for a noob who's just into this or maybe somebody who just doesn't care about all those features. Uh, with this, you essentially don't have to run any additional wires and you get voltage monitoring. And if you run one additional wire, you get even more accurate voltage monitoring. Voltage monitoring and a call sign, what more could you really ask for? So take a look at this camera, uh, the Runcam Swift 2. There's another one out there also. I think it's the Foxier Arrow. The Foxier Arrow, I think, and I think the Arrow actually did it first had a built-in OSD and voltage monitoring, but um, the Swift 2 is the one that I'm looking at right now. Uh, I got an arrow actually in the mail uh, coming soon from Surveil Zone, and hopefully uh, that will end up with some kind of a shootout. I've got the Rotor Riot Swift on the bench. I've got the uh, arrow coming. I've got the Eagle, which we all know I love. So maybe I'll get some cameras together and do a little camera shootout. One more thing, if you want to see some flight footage from this camera, my recent antenna shootout was shot 100% with this camera. So you can go ahead and watch that. Uh, my, uh, my, my LaForge versus Trudy shootout was also shot with this camera. So you can go, there's so much footage from this camera in those videos. You can see as much of it as you want. Thanks for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this. And I hope you, if you didn't know that a camera like this was out there, this is a really great and simple OSD solution for pilots who might need to upgrade their camera anyway. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching and happy flying.